On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Right now we're joined by Melbourne Demons young gun Tom Sparrow. This is the Rush Hour Sharpest for Maz Group. Delivering quality, trust and innovation in construction and proudly trained by Trade Institute Victoria. TIV.vic.edu.au In the hands of Sparrow from 50. Sparrow joins the party. Three in a row now for the Demons and they kick away to a two-goal lead. And the MCG is a lot. Now, Bill, yep. when you've got some sea ball, get ball midfielders, mm-hmm. which the Demons have in Petrarca and Oliver, they tend to just go hunting. Yes. You need some other players around to be uh, two-sided. In other words, defensive and offensive. A Tom Atkins-like. Well, and that's what this young man is. Tom Sparrow runs as hard defensively as anyone who wears the Melbourne jumper, and he joins us now. Tommy, good chatting to you, mate. No, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me, fellas. Hey, so that's obviously a bit of what uh, Goody says to you. Listen, you know, these, the superstars go go after it, but we need some cover. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know, you've got some pretty good players in there, so you want to let them play to their strengths. And for me, my, one of my strengths is my running. So um, if I can do that, uh, that helps those boys out. But, you know, I would love to have a crack as well and put my head over it when I can. So it's a bit of both. Um, but I, yeah, pride myself on my work rate, that's for sure. And kicking goals, very important, Thomas. Yeah, that's that's the cream on the top. So uh, you get pretty pumped when you can kick a goal. And, uh, that's, and that's the thing. I mean, if you, you test your opponents both ways, mm. um, you get those opportunities. So um, take them when they're there, I guess. How'd you pull up from last week and what's happened this week? Because you've got to prepare another big one Friday night. Yeah, pulled up okay. Uh, obviously, it was a little bit flat with the result. But um, yeah, it was some good, good signs that pretty positive things out of the game. I mean, contest was good. I think we won that by 24 or 25 or something like that. And time and forward half, things like that were going our way. But, um, yeah, another big game this week to prepare for. Um, a lot of learnings as well from last week that that we can that we can use. Um, and clearly we've played Brisbane twice already this year. Mm. So um, we've got a lot of vision from those games that we can, that we can draw on. And I think everyone will be pretty clear on, on how to go about this week. Ten goal pumpings, both of those were, of course. So yep. it's a good matchup for Melbourne, uh, Brisbane. The, getting back to the goals, what I like about you, Tommy, is you love kicking them on the run, like the famous one, the back end of the third quarter in the granny. But then again, on the on the weekend, nice big bombs from fifty on the run. Yeah, well, I think those ones are a bit. You don't have to think about them. Um, <laughs> you, you sort of get the ball in your hand. You have a few seconds, and you just kick it. Um, set shots a little bit different. You got the whole thirty to you know think about what's going on in the crowd or the man on the mark, something like that. How many steps you're going to take before you run up and that sort of thing. So for me, I find it much easier just to uh, see the ball, just kick it straight. Um, and I find myself in those opportunities a lot more than set shots, thankfully. Keep it simple, uh, Tommy boy. And you need some goal kickers uh, down there. It just hasn't clicked, has it? We've just got to find a, a few more goal kickers other than Fritches. Yeah, well, we've got, yeah, obviously Bailey's had a, Outstanding year. I think he's kept going every game this year. Yeah, he's been yep. uh, really consistent. Um, and then obviously the blokes beneath him have been pretty solid as well. Um, if we can build that consistency, that obviously helps. And it obviously starts with us as well in the midfield, getting the supply to them. Um, that'll help a lot for them as well to give them the opportunity to, you know, impact on the scoreboard for us. What about the track? We hear about the crack bone in his leg oh, yeah, and yeah. also a corky in the calf. How's he going? Yeah, it's been all the talk this week, that's for sure. But uh, he's going all right. He's moving well. Um, he he sees, seems to think he's he's doing all right, and he and he looks that way as well. So he's in good spirits. Um, he'll be out there. Um, yeah, I don't doubt him one bit that he'll that'll be at his best on on Friday night. And Clary's mush. I'm not sure he can do any damage <laughs> no. to it visually, but how's he going? Uh, yeah, he's he looks like he's been in a bar fight. That's what he looks like. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> He's got stitches on his eye and his cheek. His eyes red. He looks, he looks pretty funny to be honest. But um, he'll be right as well. He's he's a tough unit. He'll yeah. put his head over it no matter what. So you can't expect anything different from Clay. You know what you're going to get there, and you know what you're going to exactly. get with Froffy's mate too. Gee, he was outstanding last week. He was incredible. What, what was it? 16 inset possessions, I think, from yep. from Steve. Oh. Finals record? Is that what it is? Is that a it would be record? close. Yep. Yeah, he was incredible. So. Um, and especially on, on Buddy as well. He played a massive part. Um, 
on Friday night last week, and he will again this week, I'm sure. He leads the way back there, and he's a great teammate to have on your side, yeah, that's for sure. Exactly. Hey, Tommy, I didn't think you coped well enough as a team with Sydney's pressure in the back half of that game. Certainly from about the two or three minute mark of the third quarter on, they poured it on and it looked like there was a bit of double handling and a bit of turning the footy over. And I tell you who was one guilty of that was the helmeted number 10. Uh, I thought a couple of times <laughs> coughed the footy up when real heat was brought on. But, but it's something you're going to have to address because that's what finals are about. Exactly. I think, you know, I touched on it at the start of um, yeah, this episode, but we were pretty good for the first three quarters with the contest and stuff like that. But the last quarter, I think they were, uh, we were minus four contests and minus 12 tackles. So um, they definitely swung that, swung that around. Their pressure was really good, um, invited a few backfield handles and got the momentum going their way, which doesn't help our supply. Um, they were really good in that space of the ground, I think, with their hunt and their pressure to tackle all those sort of things. So that'll be one thing we look to uh, look to address is you clean up fundamentally and get the ball going our way. All right, Tommy, stick around. Yes. More to discuss oh, with this yes. uh, Adelaide Hills product exactly. next. Exactly. More Kim. Tom Sparrow on the Rush Hour next. Triple M. Triple M's Rush Hour with JB and Billy. The other rumour is he might have been with his wife, Gazelle, for a romantic holiday. Gazelle. <laughs> his, his wife, Gazelle. Gazelle. <laughs> JB and Bill, this is Triple M's Rush Hour, and thanks to tiv.vic.edu.au, we are joined by Tom Sparrow ahead of a huge game for the Demons against Brisbane on Friday night at the MCG. Uh, Tommy, what's your nickname down there at the club? Uh, well, I've got a few. Yes. Um, Gussie, your mate, likes to call me Bot. Um, don't know where that came from. Dot? So, nah, Bot with a B. Oh. Um, bot? I get, I get that a bit. I mean, that's just, it changes week to week, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> now, I was at a winery, Tommy, about uh, ooh, a couple of months ago. Oh, here we go. Um, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> with uh, Bernard Vince and uh, Jars and Bluey, they had the rush hour team over there. We were at a very nice winery in the Adelaide Hills, and a lovely lady came wandering up and started chatting to me. And oh. about three minutes into the conversation, I asked myself, I'm thinking, who do I actually know who this lady is? Wow, She's we, very yeah. friendly wow. and very nice. <laughs> And it was your beautiful mum, Tommy. Yeah, I. She did tell me about that. Um, she's she's a cracker. Um, she's not shy at all, as you as you know. But <laughs> no, and and loves a bit of wine as well. So I think uh, she was pretty happy to see uh, some some big names in the Adelaide Hills. I think she was pretty surprised. But um, I mean, she does it to everyone. She gets it. You know, the boys even tell me she sends them a message on Instagram every now and again to get around them. So um, she just she just can't uh, keep her head out of it, but she loves it, and uh, she's a whole heap of fun. So Well, Bridgewater, Callington, I know, was uh, the areas that you grew up in. Um, I had a couple of places in the Adelaide Hills, one in Balhanna and then out at Woodside. Oh, that yeah. is God's country there, Tommy. Yeah, that is a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, it is. It's very nice up there. It's uh, very... Uh, it can be pretty quiet as well, which is good to get away from the city, but um, very picturesque as well, wine country. Um, I moved around a little bit. Uh, Bridgewater's nice as well. Harndorf, another one. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, a few wineries there. Pretty touristy now, I think, though. Um, but, yeah, it's a great part of the world. Um, so I'm pretty grateful to, to grow up there, that's for sure. And then Prince Alfred yes. College, of course, which is Greg and Ian and Trevor Chapel, Greg Blewett. We've talked about him before. It's a famous sporting school, Prince Alfred College. Yeah, Bernard Vince, as you mentioned before. Bernard. Bernard. Mm. I can't believe they let him in there. Yeah, he wouldn't have done year 12. He would have done year no. 10. I don't even know if he played in for footy at, at Prince Alfred College. I think he just played like cricket or something. Yeah. But um, he turned out all right. So, yeah, no, nah, another yeah, good school. Um, yeah, did my all my senior school in there. Uh, a lot of footy boys come out of there. Jack Trengove. Um, I think Jack Viney went there for a few years. Yes. Still my teammates as well, Cozzy and... Uh, Kate Chandler, um, we're also there. So, um, yeah, they've got some good products, that's for sure. And I'm sure there'll be many more to come. And Layla? Uh, and she, Layla. She from uh, Adelaide or Melbourne, mate? No, nah, she is from Melbourne. Oh, so, um, yeah, she's she did grow up in Noosa for a bit, but she's lived in Melbourne most of her life. So, um, yeah, she's uh, she's around a fair bit. Like, <laughs> good to see her. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> She doesn't. She doesn't like me going home too much in, in the off season. Uh, going back to Adelaide, so I might stick around this year. Well, you wouldn't stay Who, too long. No, exactly. Who's the biggest pest at the club? 
uh, Tommy, oh. who uh, you're just in you in the rooms yeah. and you know it's someone who's just annoying. Who is that? Probably I'd have to go with Jake Lever or Toby Bedford, one of those two <laughs> blokes. Jake, just, Jake Lever, you don't know what you're going to get with him. He could he can just really annoy you. Um, Toby <laughs> Bedford, he's just a ball of energy, so um, you don't know what you're going to get with him either. And he he can make your life hell, but it's, he's also very funny, um, which is a good thing as well, I think. And Jakey Lever's moustache. What's going on there? <laughs> Mate, he loves it. I've seen some photos of him the other day without it. I think they had a photo up somewhere, and he looked completely That's different. different. <laughs> he, looks, he looks about 10 years younger as well. He looks like an old man with his moustache. He does. He but he does. loves it. Hey, and the lines are, oh, geez, I hope Chris Fager isn't listening, Jim, because they're zip and 11 out of their last games yes. at the MCG. I don't know if that goes up on the whiteboard uh, in there at Melbourne, but uh, that's not a great record. And poor old Fakes hates talking about it, doesn't he, Jim? Just, uh, he doesn't in. like it. Just I don't blame him. him. Uh, Jack Sparrow, just listening in there. <laughs> that's a nickname nah, for you. Well, you should be called Jack, actually. I should be called Jack. I th- some reason Charlie Spargo gets Jackie Sparrow sometimes. I don't know where that's come from, but what's going on? They, yeah, that, <laughs> what's going on there? Anyway, but no, nah, it's definitely not up on our whiteboard the uh, the stat there. But um, it'd be a pretty hostile territory to come to the MCG, and um, hopefully we get a big crowd, big, big crowd, big crowd there. Um, but I mean, yeah, well, our job is to yeah get a win for them, hopefully, and um, make it make it twelve and zero for Brisbane this mm. week, hopefully, and. Um, then keep charging on. We're not sure about Sparks. We think he's not quite right no, somehow. No, yeah. it's not, we're not sure what isn't right about him, but something's not quite right. <laughs> Bloody good player is what he is. Hey, Tom McDonald, any chance? Um, I don't see it on match committee, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure there. I haven't heard anything. Um, I haven't heard anything, Kevin. I mean, no. I haven't heard anything. I don't see it on match committee, but uh, I guess that's up to the coaches to choose that one. Or to be so risky. I would say no, no Bill. I'd say that's a no, Jim. From that answer, I oh. think that was really no. Jack well, Sparrow. I genuinely just don't know. Oh, you so. don't know. Jack doesn't know. He just hasn't heard anything around the club. His name's <laughs> Tom. Well, I like Jack, yeah. but I like Jack. So now you've got some new clubs on order, Tommy Boy. Jack. Have you gone yep. to ta- Taylor Made or where have you headed? Uh, I just actually went to local drum and golf. Um, get fit up there with the My Match. Um, yes. Just went there for about an hour and hit a few balls. Got some new Titleist clubs on the way is what I ended up with. So, um, we'll cut that, that out, Jim. That's, we, we'll, we'll need to cut. I think I heard you say tailor-made, so that's all we... That's all no, we'll focus on. Made. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, Jackie boy. <laughs> hey, good luck, mate. Um, well, I love the way you go about yeah, it. It's, exactly. uh, it's a, it's a great uh, foil for what you've got in the middle of that uh, amazing midfield and, as Bill said, then getting forward and kicking goals as well. You've made a great start to your career, Premiership included in all of that. Good luck, not only this weekend, but hopefully for the rest of September. Thanks, Thanks JB. Thanks, Bill. See you, Jackie boy. Loved it. (laughs) Tom Sparrow from the (laughs) Melbourne Footy Club on the rush hour ahead of a huge final against the Lions on Friday night.